Hello my dear students, myself Minu Srivastav and today we are going to start the second part of the sterilization series and here we are going to discuss about the moist heat sterilization. But as we have completed the previous lecture, I have told you that we will discuss the sunlight also as we forgot in the previous lecture. Okay, so first we will start with the sunlight and then we will discuss moist heat sterilization. Sunlight is a part of the dry heat sterilization but in some books they have written separately because this uh, maybe they are not including the dry heat but uh, in the paper uh, they are asking as a short note. Sunlight, sunlight has the bactericidal action and it has the bactericidal action due to the ultraviolet rays. In the sunlight, we as we know that the sunlight has the ultraviolet rays and that these ultraviolet rays, thus these have the bactericidal action. Now we will, now I want to know from your side then what is the bactericidal and what is the bacteriostatic. Please comment me in the comment box. Here, now we are going to discuss about the moist heat sterilization. Moist heat sterilization, as the word say, it has some moist or humidity and these the bacteria kill by coagulating and the denaturing their proteins and the enzyme here we have discussed that the moist heat sterilization is uh, uh, in three phases temperature below 100 degrees celsius temperature at 100 degrees celsius and temperature above 100 degrees celsius at temp now we are going to discuss temperature first we are going to discuss temperature below 100 degrees celsius and the temperature below 100 degrees celsius the first is the vaccine bath second is the pasteurization of milk and third is the inspissator inspissator is the kind of tongue twisting as just for me maybe you about uh, maybe uh, you are also uh, feeling like this i don't know okay just comment me vaccine bath first is the vaccine bath the term is said the something is uh, something water bath is for vaccine as we know that the vaccine is a very very much heat sensitive so for that we have to maintain the temperature at particular region okay so vaccine bath has a special water bath to sterilize the bacterial vaccine these vaccine bath are for non-sporing bacteria okay so uh, those bacteria we can kill with this method which have no spores okay which has no stage in the spore relation okay okay so in this method the 60 degrees celsius is maintained for one hour 60 degrees celsius for one hour and for serum and the body fluid, we will maintain the 56 degrees Celsius for one hour. Okay. So, uh, as we have seen, uh, uh, as uh, uh, in this uh, vaccine bath, the temperature range is 56 to 60 degrees Celsius and the time duration is one hour. Now, the pasteurization of milk, here the pasteurization of milk is discovered by Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur is discussed or discovered something else and uh, Louis Pasteur discuss, discovered a, another discovery it has uh, main uh, discovery okay so kindly comment to me then what Louis Pasteur discovered okay else then this pasteurization of milk okay in this the pasteurization of milk the meth, uh, around 97 to 99 percent of the total bacterial count are destroyed and it is for milk borne pathogens as tuberculi, salmonella, streptococcus, coxilla barnetti and brucella. Okay, so pasteurization of milk is of two types. Pasteurization of milk two types but we will discuss another type also but mainly it is a two type. Holder method and the flesh method. Hold In the holder method the 63 to 65 degrees Celsius is maintained for 30 minutes and the flash method is 72 degrees celsius is maintained for 50 to 20 seconds and cool down just quickly cool down below 10 degrees celsius in some books they have written below 13 degrees celsius so you will not getting any confusion the range of the cooling is around 13 to 10 degrees celsius 
ओके सो सेवेंटी टू डिग्री सेल्सियस इज अ फिफ्टीन टू थर्टी सेकेंड वी हैव टू क्विक वी हैव टू हीट अप अप टू द सेवेंटी टू डिग्री सेल्सियस फॉर ट्वेंटी सेकेंड्स अराउंड एंड जस्ट सडनली कूल इट डाउन अराउंड द टेन डिग्री सेल्सियस ओके इन द अल्ट्रा पॉइस्चराइजेशन दिस अ थर्ड मैथड बट मेनली टू मैथड्स आर देयर इन द पॉइस्चराइजेशन बट इन सम बुक्स विच आर रिसेंटली पब्लिश दे हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द अल्ट्रा पॉइस्चराइजेशन ऑल्सो सो आई हैव इंक्लूडेड ऑल्सो इन माई लेक्चर इन द अल्ट्रा पॉइस्चराइजेशन मैथड द टेम्परेचर इज रेंज एट टू टू डिग्री सेल्सियस फॉर थ्री सेकेंड्स एंड सडनली इट विल कूल डाउन ओके सो दिस मैथड इज नोन एज द अल्ट्रा पॉइस्चराइजेशन मैथड here the third method that is the inspissator inspissator is the copper box and which is that has a water jacket okay it is also termed as the fractional sterilization it is also termed as the fractional sterilization here the temperature is maintained 80 to 85 degree celsius for 30 minute and for three successive days this is the main point 80 to 85 degree celsius for 30 minutes and for 3 days we have to maintain this temperature for 30 30 minutes now let's the principle begin that what happen in this 3 days suppose that we are going to uh, just on the first day as we are increasing the temperature uh, and maintaining the temperature up to the 30 up to the 80 85 degree celsius for 30 minutes all the vegetative forms get killed but the spore forms are going to germinate because of this excessive temperature exposure so in this temperature range the spores are going to germinate so uh, in the next successive heatings these germinate spores will kill as the successive heating okay so i have written in this uh, principle in the interval between the heating the remaining spores germinate into the vegetative form Which are then killed on subsequent heating. So, ये जो है subsequent. Uh, so, in the subsequent heating, the germinate spores also killed. Okay. So, in uh, that uh, in spicata, it's a very much uh, uh, beneficial method because the vegetative forms as well as the spore forms also get killed. Okay. So, uh, uh, this in spicata is specially designed for the particular for sterilization of particular medium. like loffler serum medium loffler serum medium dorset egg medium and lg medium what is the lg medium that is a launstein jensen medium and you can you can include the other examples also here now we will we now we are uh, uh, going to discuss the temperature above uh, the temperature at 100 degree celsius okay so i have discussed now the temperature below 100 now we we are going to discuss temperature at 100 degree and temperature above 100 degree celsius okay so let's get started now we will discuss about the temperature at 100 degree celsius now the temperature at 100 degree celsius there are the three methods involved in this 100 degree celsius range first is the boiling second is the steam at 100 degree and third is the tindalization the boiling as the boiling is simple method because any uh, if uh, you uh, in this process you will take utensil and take the water and any uh, any kind of the instrument which you want to sterilize put in that utensil and let the water boil okay so so uh, the uh, as you know that the boiling point of the water is the 100 degree celsius okay so at the 100 degree celsius the vegetative forms of the bacteria are easily killed but the spore forms are not killed by this method okay so <coughs> one thing we as a precaution we have to take only the distilled water okay why is it so because if any hard water if we are taking in the utensil the calcium and the magnesium salt layer is deposited on your instruments okay so for precautionally you should take the distilled water and if you want to proceed your process in a accurate or the more uh, efficient process you have to take the nhco3 means the sodium bicarbonate as 2% concentration the sodium bicarbonate can increase or efficient and make the process more efficient okay so 
different glass syringes tubes stoppers small surgical instrument we can uh, sterilize with the help of simple boiling okay now the second is the steam at 100 degree celsius as we know that the water boils at 100 degree celsius in and it convert into steam okay so the temperature of boiling water and the steam is same that is the 100 degree celsius but the main thing is that the steam has latent heat okay or you we can say it's a hidden heat okay so the penetration power and the sterilizing power is more of the steam as compared to boiling water so here the steam at 100 degree celsius is more efficient as compared to the boiling at 100 degree celsius okay here the process is also termed as the compressed or saturated steam in this process the different arnold or koch steamers are taken in that process the perforated plates are taken and the instrument which we are going to sterilize is keep on the perforated plate and that the steam when the steam pass it has the more it has the more penetration power and the steam pass through the perforations and it will approach the instrument and it will kill the spore forms and the veg it will kill the vegetative forms and some what and some extent the spore forms also okay so here i have written something at normal atmospheric pressure we have to perform this process and the it is a more effective because the steam has the more high penetration power the instrument that is the koch or arnold steamer okay some media some medias like the sugar media will decompose at high temperature in autoclave so for that we have to use or we should use the koch or arnold steamer because uh, such medias which contain the sugar or the gelatin they will decompose at above 100 degree celsius so for those sterilization we should use the steam at 100 degree celsius okay so for this the steam at 100 degree celsius is good the article to be sterilized are kept on the perforated plate through which the steam passes here now the third process that is the tindalization the tindalization name so because the john tindal scientist discovered this process it is also termed as the fractional fractional sterilization as we have discussed that the incipitator also termed as the fractional sterilization why is it so fractional distillation the fractional means uh, just a part okay means the sterilization will accomplish in a part or fraction here also we will introduce or steaming we will introduce the steaming on uh, at 100 degree celsius on three consecutive days okay so steaming is performed in any steam sterilizer like koch or arnold sterilizer also you have taken you should take and for 20 minutes you will expose okay so when you will expose the steam at 100 degree celsius for 20 to 30 minute and after completing the time that instrument or that media is incubate at 37 degree celsius overnight why is it so because <coughs> at 100 degree celsius steam exposure all the vegetative forms get killed but the spore forms are not able to kill okay so uh, during the incubation after uh, during the incubation of overnight the spore will germinate and convert into the vegetative form and so when they will germinate and convert into the vegetative form now the second steaming day that vegetative forms killed again we will cool it down and incubate for the overnight and the remaining spores will germinate and on the third day third is steaming that germinated spores will killed okay so here maybe somewhat spores can remain but maximum of spores can able to can kill by this method okay so i have written here so the spores will germinate into vegetative form and they destroy during steaming second and third day 
here different uh, here the uses for this the uh, sterilizing egg serum and sugar containing media the gelatin media also used for this tendalization process now we are going to discuss about the autoclave means the sterilizing at above the uh, 100 degrees celsius so let's get started now we are going to discuss about the temperature above 100 degrees celsius for uh, creating the 100 above uh, temperature above 100 degrees celsius we utilize or we use the autoclave okay autoclaving is done by the steam under pressure the principle behind the autoclave is just to change the boiling point of the water as we know the boiling point of the water is 100 degrees celsius at the 100 degrees celsius the water convert into the vapor form but as we increase the pressure the boiling point is uh, is being changed okay so the water which boil normally at 100 degrees celsius if we increases the pressure the water start to boil above 100 degrees celsius it will may be 120 130 140 degree celsius it depends on how much pressure we are applying okay so here the uh, the principle behind is that it work on the moist heat sterilization and steam under pressure is work okay here the high pressure increases the boiling point of water and thus help to achieve a higher temperature for the sterilization here the temperature 100 uh, above the 100 degree celsius destroy the vegetative cells as well as the spore forms here as we have studied below 100 degree celsius at the 100 degree celsius the main thing or the main uh, the uh, uh, we can say the main uh, problem is that to kill the spore form it's not uh, very much uh, tedious task to destroy the vegetative form but it's very much hard to destroy the spore form because the spore form is the quite resistive form so to uh, as we are increasing the temperature in the autoclave it's so very easy to destroy the spore form so in the medical instruments or the hospitals autoclave is being very much utilized okay so here the temp autoclave i have drawn it's not good so uh, if you want to see the autoclave you can see by this i have taken from the google itself so here the autoclave you can see it's somewhat similar like a modified pressure cooker here now we are going to discuss about how the autoclave has in the construction autoclave has the modified pressure cooker it has the certain construction just we are going through first it has the pressure chamber as in the pressure cooker there one a lid uh, there one in a steel uh, that uh, stainless steel or that uh, tough material chamber okay from uh, in that utensil or the chamber we are keeping our things okay so here the stainless steel or especially gun metal material is used okay and in that the outer and the inner form outer inner chamber in the inner chamber we are keeping our things okay and the outer jacket is quite resistive which can tolerate the high pressure of the steam here the size is 100 to 100 liter to 3000 liter now the lid as in the pressure cooker the the closing lid, uh, lid or we can say it's a outer lid or just closing the pressure cooker the lid is used okay we can say in the uh, simple language a dhakkan okay so here in the lid the <laughs> we have seen that in the lid one uh, that rubber uh, rubber uh, 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 washer rubber is there to seal of the uh, pressure cooker same is that the lid is seal of the autoclave and lid is made up of air tight via screw clamps and the asbestos washer okay so lid is completely and uh, the what work lid uh, perform that is completely close the chamber and air tight the chamber so that not uh, not a single pinch of steam get out okay so th third is the pressure gouge 
the pressure gauge indicate the pressure the pressure gauge indicate the pressure that what pressure is generated in the lid uh, in the chamber okay third uh, fourth the pressure releasing unit the pressure releasing unit here the pressure release, uh, releasing unit is just like a whistle as the vessel timely releasing the pressure releasing the steam so it will control the pressure same as the pressure releasing unit like whistle it control the pressure inside the chamber by releasing certain amount of vapor here the safety valve as we have seen in the lid of the pressure cooker one safety valve is present and how the safety valve works as it work in the crucial case what is the crucial case double generate in the autoclave if the autoclave is not working properly or when the safety uh, when the pressure releasing unit is not working anymore so at a time to control or to avoid the bursting of the autoclave the safety valve has that thin layer of rubber that burst and release the pressure same type of the safety valve was also present in the lid of the pressure cooker also okay now the next is the heating element here one is a heating socket is present and it's just like a heating rod as we are uh, using in our houses just like this <coughs> to uh, uh, to heat the water okay so here the heating elements is a electrical steam generator or boiler is present underneath the chamber here downside downward side one socket is present and with the socket the plug is uh, attached and the electrical supply start okay so here the heating element start to generate the uh, to uh, the heating element provide the heat and to generate the water into the steam now the remaining part that is that what temperature and what uh, uh, forms other things just now we are uh, we will discuss okay now the main thing is that the temperature pressure and time then what temperature what pressure and up to what time we have to maintain here the main thing which we have to be considered that only one fifth part of the cylinder is filled with the water means the uh, cylinder is not completely filled with the water only up to the one fifth part of the cylinder is filled with water other will remain for the instruments or whatever things which is to be sterilized okay here the temperature pressure and time it's a 121 degree celsius 15 pounds and the, it's maintained for 15 to 20 minutes now the temperature 126 degree celsius 20 pounds pressure we have to maintain up to the 10 minutes if we are increasing the temperature that is 130 degree degree celsius for 30 pounds pressure the time is only 3 minutes so these are basic things which Uh, uh in which we perform in the autoclave there are the certain applications merits and demerits okay uh, if we are discussing that uh, we can say that's the advantages the advantages that the autoclave is important for um, kill vegetative as well as spore form also vegetative and spore form killing okay spore kills okay second the uh main thing is that it's quite economic okay it's economic because the one time it's investment one time investment otherwise it has no so many things only you have to use the water okay and the third thing is that that all uh, it's a easy to handle also some it is easy to handle okay and especially it is designed for the medical instruments especially designed for the medical instruments okay but it has the some disadvantages it has the some disadvantages means it what is disadvantages we can we cannot uh, sterilize the powders okay cannot sterilize the powder okay the main is that main disadvantage is that second the heat as we are increasing the temperature above 100 degree so the heat sensitive or heat labile materials we cannot sterilize with this instrument okay heat sensitive cannot be sterilized heat sensitive cannot be sterilized 
okay and the mm, sometimes sometimes by unfortunate maybe uh, uh, some incidents or that some uh, miss happening is there so sometimes uh, uh, we can say it's uh, uh, produce some miss happenings also so uh, i'm not writing here as a disadvantage but sometimes it has been it has been seen okay so this the autoclave part is completed and we have completed the moist heat sterilization in this lecture in the la in the coming lectures we will complete the chemical sterilization radiations and the gaseous sterilization till then bye bye stay safe stay healthy thank you